What up dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. So, I'm finally recording my newest Korra video, going over both of the main loadouts I use on Korra Prime. There were some big changes with the Abyss of the Goth update involving Venari and Smita Cats, so we're going to be showing Smita Cat and Venari builds today too. If you enjoy these types of deep dive loadout videos, make sure to hit that sub button, we do daily Warframe video uploads. And also, check out the live stream channel as well. Now that Plague Star is over, time to get back to the normal Warframe gameplay of opening relics and things of that nature. So come on, stop by if you'd like to. Probably be live tomorrow. All right, let's get right into it. I got two full loadouts to show you, so let's not waste any time here. So let's go over the two different loadouts for Korra I'm going to be showing you. And they are pretty much what kind of mood I'm in for. So we have the Rauta Epitaph Magistar as the maximum damage but also uh, potentially lower cat buffs. We'll talk about that in a little bit too. So this is the maximum damage. Rauta, Magistar Prime. The reason the Magistar Prime is the best is because it has, or rather there is no Magistar Prime, it's the Magistar Normal, um, but the reason it is the best for overall damage versus the Ceramic Dagger for quality of life is, is the Incarnate Evolution at the end called Critical Parallel. Also there's a Arcane called Magus Aggress. This is really the crux of why we're doing so much more damage with the uh, Magistar over the Ceramic Dagger. On Warframe melee transfer, uh, Heavy Blades deal 300% increased critical damage for 4 consecutive attacks. Cool down 20 seconds. It works for Heavy Blades. Or, sorry, it works for Heavy Hammers. So, the fact that this is a hammer, it, not a Heavy Blade, doesn't matter because it just it just works. So, the way you activate this is a, it's a amp, or sorry, an arcade for your operator. So, make sure this is equipped in your operator, Magus Aggress. I've got it equipped in my operator right now. So, you go into operator form, and you push the melee button. Now you will see Magus Aggress in the top right corner. This is now active. Increased blade, heavy blade critical. This is critical chance. It's actually critical damage. Uh, so the UI is broken on it. But this works on hammers. So that's why the the uh, the Magistar and Karnon is so good. It uh, it works on hammers. So just going over the uh, builds and everything. Let's get some. Let's actually get some gameplay and show how this works too. So the Rauta is Kalervo's signature shotgun. I'm gonna pause these guys to start off with. The Rauta is Kalervo's signature shotgun. What it will do, it will build your melee combo. So look, I have zero hits of melee combo right now. I use Ra the Rauta as a shot with a shot. One shot of the Rauta, 28 hits of combo. So fire off like two magazines of Rauta. And now we're at 10x. So the way you get your Incarnate on Evolution, you have to do a heavy attack. So we, we used our heavy attack. We still have a little bit of initial combo because of the Magistar's Incarnate. We rebuild it back up. Now we're back to near full damage. So you can see right there, with our slash proc build, not even fully stacked, we're doing about a million damage slash rocks. And when it's a, in a slight AoE, it's about 258,000. So that's going to be pretty decent. Um, like I said, that wasn't even with every buff, and that was with me building no combo alone. So uh, let's start going over all the stuff. We'll also show this in game. Let's go ahead and show some gameplay here. So here's how it works in mission. Um, I'm on Circular Survival on Lua. There I am building my combo with the Rauta. And I just whip and everything's dead. This is a slash proc build. It's not meant for upfront damage, but it just it outright one-shots everything. Uh, and some of my previous tests, this build, to be fair, has a god roll ribbon, but this would one-shot the Acolyte before the slash proc happened. That's not what this build's supposed to do, but it was doing it anyway. That's how much damage we're dealing. I'm also going full melee crit damage shards on Korra, just to kind of flex it, to be honest, with the god roll ribbon. Uh, I'd really recommend that in the in the end, you sh I, at least me, I'd probably go for duration shards on Korra. So you have to re uh, recast Dispensary and Strangle Dome less often. Additionally, more duration makes it where your ensnare second ability grabs other enemies quicker. So... You got plenty of options for Korra with Archon Tau Shards. But yeah, the crit damage ones do work on her Whip Claw, so it just it makes sense to do it. Alright, so going over the builds, let's start off with the first loadout build for Korra. We have the, the Rauta build. So, for Korra herself, uh, you will notice that these are all Crimson Tau Shards for, for melee damage. That's a lot of melee damage. Our Magistar in Karnon multiplier 17.7. Yeah? <laughs> So that's a lot of crit damage. Uh, and also, we're not running any Arcan Energize on here anymore because Arcan Energize is not necessary with how much they buffed Equilibrium. So basically, if you, if you look in the gameplay footage in the background too, it's like I'm like energy hungry. My, my energy bar is basically just entirely full. I can't spend energy fast enough to actually drain my energy bar. So yeah, Energize would, would actually be a waste on this build because Equilibrium is that good with dispensary. So but yeah, going over this a little bit more, 
So as far as exploiting every mod on here, uh, we have no, uh, what's it called again? Decaying key, whatever it's called. The catalyzing shields. We have no catalyzing shields. And, and you're like, why, why don't you have catalyzing shields? You don't have a full shield gate from the ability cast. Well, the thing is, base shield gate is good enough nowadays that, uh, yeah, you don't even need the catalyzing shields if you're in most situations. Like, even when you're surrounded by high-level enemies, with the combination of brief respite and a little bit of auger, I'm pretty sure, we are getting enough shields that we can just, you know, take a shot there, uh, take a shot there. As we're casting abilities, we're getting shields back. It's giving us enough shield tank to actually proc Arcane Aegis, a 3% chance to basically make us immortal for 12 seconds. With this procs, with all of our shield that we're getting regen from, we will have a constant flow of shields, making it where enemies can hardly even kill us. We can just keep whipping them and kill them, too. Yeah, Brief Rest is really good on this build. I would recommend keeping this on here for sure. Prime Sure Footed is like a 400-day log, and if you don't have it, that sucks. But just keep logging into the game, I guess. Uh, it makes you not get knocked over. And also, it's this is essential for the second Korra loadout, the Brahma Korra. But uh, for the uh, for the Rauta Korra, not as necessary, but uh, it's very nice to have, just for a multitude of reasons. Equilibrium makes this build work. Health orbs become energy orbs and vice versa, and like they become like double orbs, basically. Very, very nice. You make sure you have this mod, please, if you're doing this build. This is why we don't have to run Energize, by the way. Stretch to make it where we have more range. Also, extended to have more range, too. We don't really need power strength to this build that badly, so the negative power strength does not really matter. Uh, so, yeah, enough range to get us over 200%. 200% range is when the range cap on Whip Claw kicks in, but we actually went above 200 range because Struggle Dome increased range is nice. Also, Ensnare increased range is nice, too. The dispensary ability from Protea is not affected by range in any way. At least I can tell. We've got Pilfering, Strangle Dome. Enemies that are dead when, or die while they're in the struggle and will give you extra loot, 65% drop chance. Very nice for camping survivals, which I do a lot with Korra. Like, now that Plague Star is gone, I'll probably go back to camping survivals with Korra again. So this is very nice. Prime continuity for some more duration with the cast your abilities as often, even though you have infinite energy. It's just, you know, you don't want to cast it. I don't want to push that button all the time. So throw on some duration so you can have your struggle dump up for longer. As I stated earlier, you can put on more duration Tau Shards to make it we don't have to cast the abilities longer either. So very nice there. Rolling Guard, because, uh, yes, you're surrounded by enemies. You're, this is an endurance-focused build. So if you are on fire, if you are slash proc, Rolling Guard to get rid of the slash proc or the fire, and then go, go back to your shield gating with Arcane Aegis and Brief Respite. Uh, you will really cast Dispensary a lot to shield gate with this build. Uh, Prime Flow to have a bigger energy pool. Probably don't even need this, actually, but I'm going to put it on here anyway, just because, uh, yeah, when you're in a tough situation, if you have no... If you took this off, how much energy would you have, basically? Would you have... You'd have 225 energy with no shards. You could maybe put on some blue shard for energy max if you prefer to put a different mod here, but really, what mod would you put here instead? I guess, like... Uh, I guess another range mod or something, or catalyzing shields, you want to go down that route, but this works great, and I highly recommend this setup specifically. Uh, and the last mod on the build is Accumulating Whip Claw. Hitting enemies with, hitting three enemies with the Whip Claw will give you more damage, and just keep whipping, basically. Then we got Arcane Fury for more damage again. So, the reason we're doing so much more damage is because we're doing the same buffs we would use for the Ceramic Dagger, but we're using Magus Aggress, too. So let's go ahead and talk about the, uh, the first build for the Magistar... Normal. It's not. There's no. There is no Magic Star Prime. Maybe someday. Okay. So we got two different builds here. This is the one that I was using to slash proc everything. It's the slash proc build. Very similar to my old Amphis build. Basically, just the same exact thing with a uh, with a better ribbon actually. So you got Prime Pressure Point, and we've got uh, that. That's melee damage basically. So we want the thing is Condition Overload does not work on Core's Whip Claw. Okay. Whoever told you Condition Overload works on Core's Whip Claw, they were wrong. This is what works on Korra's Whip Claw. Overall melee damage. That's why our arcane on our frame is an overall melee damage arcane. So we have this. We have Weeping Wounds and Blood Rush to make it where combo increases our stats of our weapon. Very, a lot, like a lot honestly. It's very good for the Slash Proc build. For the Corrosive build, you can do the same, similar thing, but just don't, you don't care about Sash on the Corrosive build. So we got Crit Damage here, Crit Damage here, a little bit of extra Crit Chance of Glider Might. And we got two Slash Proc mods, Buzz Kill and Carnus Mandible. This makes it where the increased chance to proc Slash is a lot higher on our melee. Now, we could technically take one of these two off for a different mod, but really, the consistency of the Slash Procs is more important to me. If you want to take that off for something else, you could go for, like, Spoiled Strike, I guess. Um, or you could go for Sacrificial Steel, if you have the mod capacity for that, which I believe I do here. Uh, Sacrificial Steel, I'm already getting red crits with my Riven. My Riven is melee damage, crit damage, crit chance, minus slide crit. Almost as godly as it can be. 
Uh, I don't need a crit chance mod on my build. So if you don't have a good Riven or anything like that, if you don't have, if you don't have a Riven, period, just go get one, please. But if you don't have one, just put like the Sacrificial Steel, steel there, I suppose. You'll lose a bunch of overall damage because you don't have a God, God Roll Riven, but that's just that's what, how Rivens work in this game. You have to have the good one to equip the good one. All right, that's the Slash proc, but I usually run this, to be honest, against Grenier. Uh, against, like, if I just want to, like, flex some big damage numbers, I go for this one. This is an, uh, a corrosive one-shot build for Acolytes. Uh, and we do not need any status chance here. We just need to have big crits and big damage. So, very similar mods to the previous build, but instead of those slash proc mods, I've got Prime Fever Strike and Shocking Touch to make corrosive damage. Acolytes are weak to corrosive damage. This is the best to one shot them outright. And additionally, since we're not running sac or so, since we're not running Weeping Wounds anymore, we put Sacrificial Steel in that mod slot where Weeping Wounds was. This will just give you upfront crazy big damage. But I do recommend the slash proc in the, for the most part. All right, moving on to the Rauta. And this is a lot of builds, but, uh, you know, it's a lot to talk about here. So, we got the Rauta, the, the melee, or the, the shotgun melee of Kalervo. We got Arcan, uh, Primary Dexterity to give us increased combo duration on our on our uh, Magistar, which is nice. I'm going to talk about my complaints about the Magistar here. This is going to become a long video, I can already tell. But, yeah, we have Viral and Heat on here uh, because we are not using any armor strip on our build. Heat proc can remove enemy armor to an extent. So, this will make it where if we're building our combo off of some random enemy, they'll get really, really damaged hard after we whip them. So... Very nice, um, but yeah, the big thing here is just make sure you can spam out shots. Uh, tainted Shell to reduce the spread, so we can basically build shot uh, combo from like really far away. This shotgun becomes a sniper with this mod. And we also got Soft Hands to double up on that effect. Uh, but every fire rate mod, I wish I could throw on a reload mod too. Um, Prime Tackle will pump. Also, maybe Prime Animal Stock could be good too. So maybe like throw that on there if you want to. Um, but yeah, this has been working pretty well. And let's go ahead and just show. So. Uh, see how the, the shotgun right there? It's like, oh, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty good spread. If you swap back and forth, now it's a sniper. Like, there is literally, it's pinpoint accurate when you have that soft hands buff active. So I, I would recommend that if you're looking to build combo from far away. But really, the route to build does have flexibility. Now that I think about it, I actually do like the idea of throwing on a magazine size mod here to maybe get my entire combo in one magazine. So definitely consider prime ammo stock or prime tactical pump. Actually, maybe even both in the future. But we don't have enough time to talk about that. Let's move on to the next weapon. Because I have an entire extra loadout to show you after this, too. All right, so we got the Epitaph. Uh, situation with this is just throw on some viral and some heat. Like I said, I have no armor strip on here, so heat will remove some armor. We also got primary dexterity. Or sorry, secondary dexterity to give us more combo duration in our Magistar. Because unlike the Ceramic Dagger, we have to actually keep our combo maintained on the on the Magistar. Augur Seeker for a little bit of extra shield gates. And yeah, the, the Riven is just... It's, I just like how it has 66.6% multi-shot, to be honest. It's just like a second lethal torrent. Uh, strict, a little bit worse in some situations, too. We got the Naraman Focus Tree for uh, not losing our combo instantly with the... Oh, gosh, what's it called? Power Spike? Ca power Spike, you lose five combo per drain instead of all of it at the same time. Very nice there. Now, let's start with Venari. Okay, so Venari Prime is going to have this build. And the thing about Venari is that... Uh, so Private Pack Leader does work with Korra's Whip Claw. And you you might be like playing Korra or whatever, you're like, you look at Venari's health bar, and Venari's health bar does not have Overguard on it. You're like, what the heck? Like, why is Venari not work with Overguard? For some reason, the the health bar of Venari does not show it having Overguard. But if you actually listen in game, you will hear Venari's Overguard being broken when Venari is being like attacked by enemies when you're using this mod. So, Venari seems to actually get Overguard, but it is visually glitched to not show you if Venari has Overguard. You have to listen for the sound effect to know if Venari has Overguard or not. So yes, this does work. Uh, and this is a buffed mod. This mod did not used to do this because Overguard for frames didn't exist. So basically... Every time you whip your Korra Whip Claw, every enemy you hit will give health to Venari, like healing. And then if it's already full health, it will get Overguard up to 2200 Overguard. And remember, Overguard does have Brief Invincibility Period, too. So this is going to be Venari hopefully not dying very much. We've got Hasten Deflection and Link Redirection for some shields. Venari does not normally have shields, so you need to have Link Shields on here to actually get those for Venari. It will link to your Korra Shields, another reason to not run Catalyzing. We've got Maul and Bite to get big damage and big crit, because Venari can actually deal some decent damage. Hunter Recovery for constant health flow to our frame. Technically also more damage to an, uh, to an enemy affected by a slash proc by Venari, but they're going to die instantly anyway. Uh, then we've also got Link Vitality for more health. 
You've got Prime Animal Instinct for a ton of loot right now. You're going to need that on Korra because there's going to be loot everywhere. Sharpened Claws for a full armor removal. And Frost Jaw to make the, the Eximus get slowed through their Overguard. The idea of this was to keep Venari alive, also to give me some good quality of life through healing, uh, and also to be able to solo a Steel Path Eximus Venari. So Venari will slow... It's basically a tag team between her and Count Kirby. Or I don't even know if Venari is... Whatever. Uh, it's supposed to be between the tag team of Count Kirby and Venari. They should be able to solo a Steel Path Eximus. So that's what the cold procs come to play. This will make it where a Eximus can, is just a lot slower through their overguard. And then Count Kirby and Venari can just attack them. And hopefully kill the Eximus while I'm just, you know, scratching my nose or something. Now, special Count Kirby build here. Reminder, Count Kirby is a vampire Smita hybrid cat. He does not have the abilities of a vampire cat. He has the abilities of a Smita cat. And when we talk about the second loadout today, which I don't know if we're going to have time for it, uh, it's going to be involving some clever use of game mechanics. But here is Ninja Cat, another build meant for only being used with Korra and only being used with camping, basically. Uh, this is meant to keep Count Kirby alive so he can give me my double Kuva buff as much as, as possible. So what we're doing here is we have another... Well, it's actually not double bond. It's, actually, it's only singular bond here, but we have duplex bond for some ninja cat shenanigans. So Tenacious Bond, it's got to be somewhere on your build, either on Venari or on uh, your Smita. Increases your, increases your frames crit damage multiplier if the companion has over 50% crit chance. If you are running the Brahma setup, which I'll show you very briefly here soon, you can run Synth uh, or sorry Hunter Synergy, which will link to your primary crit chance. But if you don't have, if you're using the route to loadout, just use a rank four bite. It will give the the Smita Cat enough uh, crit chance to give you this buff. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You don't have to have it maxed out technically. But yeah, for the rest of the stuff here, we got Lamentus Bond. This is the cat's not supposed to die with this build, but just in case it does, I want my cat buff right now. So kill one Eximus, it will be back to life. Prime Pack Leader, like I said, we're playing Korra. Every whip will give Overguard to Count Kirby if he's full health, which he probably will be. Tech Assault, 60% chance he won't actually die. He'll become immune for four seconds. And then after he's immune for four seconds, I can whip once and give him full health and Overguard again. Duplex Bond, this might look a little bit weird here, but bear with me. Okay, we are casting so many abilities as Korra. Every 100 energy will make a clone of Count Kirby. These Count Kirby clones can be focused on by Eximus and enemies. It's basically just... Root diverting the aggro from my my actual Smita Cat to my fake Illusion Smita Cats. That's what this build's called, Ninja Cat. Every time you cast your Strangled Dome, that will be an Illusion Cat. Every uh, Dispensary followed by a Whip Claw will be an Illusion Cat, too. So you can have up to three Illusion Cats on the map, and they will draw aggro separately. So very nice there. Um, it's the, the energy orbs from Count Kirby Killing Stuff will literally never happen. Not that we really need energy orbs on this build anyway, because we have so much energy. Many pet, in case it dies, will take less time to respawn, and tech enhance for a longer cat buff. Also, fetch to absorb loot faster. So, that's going to be the ninja cat. We have now we have Venari, and we have Count Kirby. Let's go ahead and show how that works. Let's get, like, one Eximus, I guess. Let's do, um, let's do, like, a Eviscerator Eximus. Actually, we'll do an Arid Trooper Eximus. I'm not trying to th throw a, an Exogoxtan Eximus in here real quick, okay? So, here's how it works. Basically, if the AI wants to cooperate today... All right, so let's see Count Kirby go for it. Come on, Count Kirby. All right, here they go. So we make our illusions of cats. So there's there's an illusion cat right there. So see, the Eximus is getting slowed down through their overguard, making them a lot less effective at taking care of the illusion cats. And, for that matter, trying to shoot at me as well. So it will take them a while, but they'll be able to take care of it. Um... And as far as, like, what would be a better mod for that, I mean, you could probably throw on a different elemental mod if you want to throw, like, an electric one, or you want to throw on, like, a heat one or whatever. The heat one would remove enemy armor, but uh, Venari does have sharpened claws on right now, so Venari would actually be able to uh, fully remove the armor. It's just an RNG chance. So now the overguard's all gone. Shouldn't be too hard for Venari to take care of that. It's a little bit on the slow side. I mean, that's with Bite and with a maxed out mole. But you can definitely have Venari do some good damage. You can even throw in a Viral build there. If you didn't want to throw in Sharpened Claws, you have some good flexibility there too. So, that's enough about talking about uh, Venari and all that. Let's go ahead and show the Ceramic Dagger loadout. Yeah, you can just throw on like a, a Toxin mod here if you want to have Viral and Venari. You'd have Viral, Crit. It'd be like you're building a normal weapon. If you could fit the capacity on, that is. Maybe put on a normal Animal Instinct in that situation. All right, let's go ahead and show the other loadout. I don't have as much footage sitting around for this one right now, but... Um, this one is the one I prefer. So the way this one works is we're not focusing on our whip claw as much. We're actually focusing 
quite a bit on using the AoE Kuva Brahma to clear our enemies pretty much just as quickly. You won't be getting red crits because the Brahma doesn't have that much crit chance, but for the Ceramic Dagger, you actually want to have some sort of uh, some sort of AoE DPS weapon for this. So I'm going to switch all this stuff over. All right. Should be good. Okay. Okay, I think we're good here now. All right, now I've swapped over to the the Ceramic Dagger loadout. If you guys are still here somehow, here's a Ceramic Dagger uh, AoE Brahma. So, so it's the exact same build on Korra. Literally the exact same. I, I, I'm sure I could change some Arcanes around since I'm using the Brahma now. Uh, but the thing here is we're using the uh, Ceramic Dagger Incarnon. So we've got the... I should probably, I, need, I need to show the Magistar Incarnon. Be, before I go over this, before I forget, I'm gonna because I, I know I'm going to forget, I'm going to show the Magistar Incarnon from earlier I forgot to show. So, uh, Edge of Justice for the Magistar, Swift Break for the Magistar, and Critical Parallel for the Magistar. Sorry I didn't show that earlier. Okay, but for the Ceramic Dagger, we are currently on the wrong build. Um, but the way this one works, this is going to be very similar to the, uh, the Slash build on the Magistar, but we have the Ceramic Dagger initial combo set up with the initial combo ribbon. This is a worse ribbon for sure, but it lets us have tons and tons of built-up combo. So right now we have 67 combo before anything is actually added on. And the big thing about the Ceramic Dagger is uh, Gun and Blade on primary kill or secondary kill, plus one initial combo stacks up 100 times. So we already have 67 initial combo with the uh, Adept Reflexes as well. This will get us to 167 combo after everything's stacked up. So we can just have 167 combo walking around with that no problem at all. And how will we build up that combo? We will use the Kuva Brahma. The Kuva Brahma is amazing for AoE killing enemies. It's got good damage. It's got built-in Toxin with the Toxin roll. And we've got a Hunter of Editions build here for Slash procs and Viral procs. Very good for bypassing enemy armor. Very good for just hitting really hard through walls too. And another reason why we're running a dispensary from, from Protea is because the dispensary ability does drop AoE ammo for you and your teammates. So if you're planning on camping in a bubble, like I usually do with Korra, you can just spam your shots. Now, of course, it's going to take a couple a couple kills to get those Merciless stacks up. But yeah, after 100 kills of this, you will have your Whip Claw at maximum power. And I've actually shown the Ceramic Dagger in previous videos, too. It's, it's more of an in-mission kind of thing. But as far as the Ceramic Dagger, I don't really change too much else. I'm just going to show what I rock on my builds here. So... For the Koopa Brahma, we got a double crit multi-shot minus Corpus Riven, and this is Hunter Munitions Viral, just to bypass enemy armor and to make them all die, basically. So, uh, whatever faction you're fighting, change the Bane mod for that. You don't need to have Prime Cryo rounds, you can go with a 60-60 mod, but for overall numbers, if you have someone on your team armor stripping, you'll see a much bigger uh, damage overall damage numbers from Prime Cryo. It does not affect the slash procs of Hunter Munitions, though. And for the Ceramic Dagger, we've got the Status Chance Increase because that's a Slash one. If you're going to get a Corrosive build on the Ceramic Dagger, uh, go with the Crit one instead. That will definitely make more sense for the Corrosive build. Uh, but yeah, it's the same thing as the, um, as the whatever it's called, the Slash build for the, uh, the Hammer. Now we have the Corrosive Core up build here, same exact, it's literally the exact same thing. But you just have the initial combo. The reason, now let's talk about why would you use one or the, over the other. This is really what I wanted to make the video about. So... Why would you want to use one over the other with Ceramic Dagger versus the Magistar? And of course, other other Incarnons still work too. You can still use like the you can use the Bow Incarnon. I think people say the Bow Incarnon has more status chance technically, not that that really matters as much. Um, you can use the Bow Incarnon. You can still use the Amphis if you wanted to. You could use whatever. As long as it doesn't like drain combo when you whip claw. Why would you use the Magistar or the Ceramic Dagger and vice versa? Well, it's gonna be really coming down to quality of life and convenience. For the Ceramic Dagger, it does enough damage to just one-shot everything with the Whip Claw if you build it up. But at the same time, too, it's not as much damage as Magus Aggress. The reason Magus Aggress and the Magistar do so much more damage is because... I don't, is, is it supposed to even be working like this? It does. It, it does work like this. So, uh, yeah. Basically, do you want to go back to the Stone Age and rebuild combo up? If you don't have the Rauta, like don't. If you don't have the Rauta, I wouldn't recommend it really. I'd recommend the Ceramic Dagger over over any other stat stake if you don't have the Rauta. The Rauta. So here's the thing too. If you watch this late in the video, here's here's why I think you should stick with the Ceramic Dagger Brahma setup. When you have the Smita Cat doing those little buffs, like it's, it's like going to give you, you know, the energy. Energy buff, the Smita Cat buff for uh, Affinity, blah blah blah. One of the buffs it can give you is a reload buff. That reload buff will give you an instant reload of a gun. You might have noticed it earlier in the in the uh, video when I shot the Rauta and it actually like instantly reloaded. That's what happened. So for the Brahma, the Brahma does not have a reload. It will not give you the reload buff from the Smita. Now, does that does that indirectly give you more cat buffs? Because not only is my 
my Brahma not reloading. My Epitaph doesn't reload either. So I never get the reload buff. That's why I'm running the Epitaph. Spoiler alert. So you're going to technically get more cat buffs from that, from what I can tell. Um, now, is that placebo? Maybe. And they're also they're nerfing the Smita next year. So I'd say until they nerf the Smita, maybe use the Ceramic Dagger Brahma because of the whole no reload buff thing. But for overall, just extra damage. If you need more damage for some reason, then the Magistar is got you covered. But you're going to need to use the Rauta. The Rauta will eat that, that reload buff, unfortunately. So really up to you guys. Um, which one do you have a Riven for? Which one do you actually own? The Magistar... Just the normal Magistar just comes from the market, so it's super easy to get. And there is no Magistar Prime, maybe someday, like I said. Ceramic Dagger comes from Nightwave, uh, a little bit more annoying to get. So they're both really good. I'm going to probably go back to using the Ceramic Dagger, although I am kind of spoiled by the crazy red crit damage now. So we'll have to see. Um, I could definitely get some good plat for that Riven, too. I got a God Roll Riven for the Magistar. But either way, guys, hope you found this video fun and helpful. Uh, hope I didn't forget anything. I tried to make sure I showed as much as I possibly could here. Um, and I had a lot of footage. Like, I've been wanting to make this video for like the last month, and I finally made it, so that's great. But I lost all my ceramic dagger footage, so if you want to see some ceramic dagger footage, come stop by the stream, maybe. All right, guys, that's it. Sorry about this half-hour-long video. If you made it this far, I really appreciate you. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace!